Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. My name is Mahak and on this channel I'm trying to document my life as a cloud platform engineer. Now this video is going to be all about AWS Lambda. What it is, where it's useful, where it isn't, and in the end we're also going to be deploying our own function on Lambda. So let's get started. Now if you've heard anything about Lambda, chances are you've heard that it is a serverless service or a serverless computing service. Um, you've also probably heard that it is event-driven. But what do these terms actually mean? Now imagine we want to deposit some money into our bank account. Say we want to deposit $100 into our account. So in this case, we would probably go to our bank and we would give the money to the teller and tell them, hey, I want to deposit $100 into my account. Now we would provide them our account name and our account number. So in this case, we're not really concerned where physically our account is. We're not really concerned where the bank keeps its vault and all that stuff. The bank takes care of that for us. What we're concerned about is whether our $100 was in fact uh, deposited into our account. And when we want to retrieve it, we're able to do so just freely. This is the essence of a Lambda function. So at this point, maybe terms like event-driven and serverless computing, maybe they are starting to make a little more sense. So us going to our bank and telling the teller that we want to deposit our $100, that is going to be the event. Now this event is triggering the actual act of depositing our $100 into our account. And that is going to be our Lambda function. Now, since we don't worry about where the physical account is, that is going to be the serverless computing part of it. So when you're running Lambda functions, we are not concerned about where our code is running, where physically our code is running. Now, if you want to know how Lambda really does all of these amazing things, um, here's a diagram that, um, that is going to help us understand this better. If you're not concerned about this, skip to this timestamp. Okay, so what is happening here is we are going to write and upload our code snippet into our Lambda console, and we're going to create a Lambda function. Now, this function is ready to go. So like our example, the actual mechanism of depositing some money into some account is already in place at the bank. All it needs is a trigger. Some person walking in through the front door and asking, hey, I want to deposit some money into my account. Now, what happens internally when a Lambda function is triggered is AWS assigns some compute resources to run our code. Now, compute resources mean some CPU resource. And once the function is done running, it releases the resource back, which can be used over and over again. Now, of course, all of this is a little more complex than I'm making it out to be, but this is pretty much the essence of what is happening behind the scenes. Okay, now that we have a basic understanding of what Lambda is and how it works, let's look at a few scenarios where Lambda is extremely helpful. Now, one thing that we do a lot while building an AWS is transforming a file or just processing a file in one way or the other. So for example, we upload a file onto our storage option in AWS. Um, our Lambda will do some processing on it and it may re-upload the file back into our storage option. So for example, if we have a restaurant and we take online orders. Now for each item, if we want to have a separate photo, what we can do is we can upload like a full size image to our storage option. Our Lambda can transform that image into thumbnails and re-upload it back where it can be displayed into our website. Another scenario where Lambda is very helpful is if we are doing some processing or some transforming to our data stream or even like a live stream. Now, of course, there are a million ways how Lambda can be useful for us, but these are just some of the most common ones. Now, if we think about where Lambda is not going to be as helpful is scenarios where we need extreme control of our architecture. So for example, if we have like super specific CPU requirements, super specific network requirements, in those cases, something like an EC2 instance would be more helpful. Okay, 
Enough talking, let's get to building our own Lambda function. Okay, so this is going to be our Lambda console. If this is the first time you're coming to your console, um, it's not going to look like this. It would look something like, like this. Um, so let's go to create a function. Now, if you see, we have a couple of options over here. We have author from scratch, which means that we would develop the entire thing from scratch. We have no templates. We have we have no helping hand, basically. Then we have use a blueprint. Now, if we click this option, we can see that there are a couple of um, Lambda functions just ready to go. Then we have container image. <clears throat> Now, what this means is you can create a Lambda function and deploy it as a container image. This is a fairly new launch um, and it's pretty great, actually. And the last one is browse serverless app repos. Now, as you can see, there are so many applications that you can just um, deploy with like a couple of clicks. And these are all going to be uploaded by like individuals and um, yeah. Okay, so today we're going to be using a blueprint because we're not really interested in the coding part of it. We're more interested in what Lambda is really doing for us. Okay, let's do, let's go do a quick search for keyword S3. Okay, we have a couple of options here. Okay, let me move my face. Um, okay. So S3 get object Python. So Amazon S3 trigger that retrieves metadata for the object that has been updated. Perfect. So this is going to be like a pretty simple application, but it is going to help us understand how Lambda is being um, used. It's using Python, which is awesome for me. Let's configure this. Okay, let's enter our function name. Let's say max Lambda function. Then let's come to the execution role part of it. Now our role needs to have enough permissions to do the stuff that we wanted to do. So in this case, we want to get um, information about our metadata of our S3 bucket, our S3 objects. Now S3 is going to be the storage option that we're going to use for this example. I'm going to do another video, like another deep dive into S3, but for now, we just need to know that S3 is a storage option. So just like your C drive or your D drive. And execution role is just permissions. Okay, so we have a couple of options here. We can create a new role with basic Lambda functions. We can use an existing role, or we can create a new role from AWS policy templates. Now, if you select this, chances are you would probably go back to your role in your IAM console and tweak your permissions. Okay, since it's already defaulted to this, let's stick with this. Let's see what permissions it is trying to give. Okay, uh, but first let's enter our role name. So let's say max lambda function role. And if we look here, it says policy templates. Now, by default, this uh, console has decided to give um, the function S3 object read-only permissions. So which means that this Lambda function that we're going to be deploying is going to be able to read only uh, our S3 objects, which is perfect. Now, if you had a different use case where you want to write to a bucket or you want to do some more things into your in your S3 bucket, you would drop down and you would select some more options over here. Now, moving on to the next part, the trigger. Okay, remember in our bank account example, our trigger was us going to the bank and telling the teller that we want to deposit our money. So similarly, we have to configure some kind of trigger for this Lambda to fire. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to create a trigger where every time there's a new upload to our bucket, to our storage option, this Lambda will execute. So every time we upload a new file into our S3 bucket or our storage option over here, like our C drive, this Lambda is going to be triggered. So let's configure that part of it. There's a drop down menu for all of your buckets. I have one over here, so let me just select that. Okay, let's come to event type. Now, 
there are a couple of options over here, but we are interested in all object create events. Now, object in context of our S3 bucket is going to be our individual files that we upload. So in this scenario, we want to trigger a Lambda function every time we upload any kind of file. So let's keep it that way. Okay, let's come to prefix and the suffix part of it. Now, if your S3 bucket or your storage option has a couple of folders in it, and you want this Lambda to be triggered only when you're uploading something to one particular folder, you can configure that over here in the prefix part of it. So for example, if my this bucket had a folder called YouTube and a folder called Instagram, if I wanted to trigger this Lambda only when I'm uploading something to my YouTube folder, I would type YouTube over here. Now, I don't have any of those folders here, so I'm just going to leave that be. And the suffix part is, so if you want to trigger this Lambda function only when we're uploading a certain type of file, like a JPEG file, sorry, like a JPEG file, a PNG file, a text file, you would put that in here, or like a JSON file, you would put that in here. So, you, so as you can see, there's really a lot of um, things that you can configure in this section. Again, for our use case, I'm just going to leave it blank. And then let's come to the fun part, which is the Lambda code itself. Now, this is going to look kind of overwhelming, so let's let's just break it down. Now, the first part is we're importing all the libraries, just standard. Now, the important library here is going to be our Boto3. Now, the Boto3 library is going to be our AWS SDK for Python. Which, which just simply means that with this library, you can use, you can write code in Python and you can use all of your AWS services. Okay, let's move on to the remainder of the code. Um, so S3 client, we're getting our client over here. Then we have our actual Lambda function over here. So we're getting our bucket name and we're getting the key. Key is going to be the file name. So for example, if we're uploading, I don't know, upload.txt, um, the key is going to be upload.txt and bucket is going to be the name of your bucket. So this local variable is actually a dictionary variable and it is going to hold um, the result of whatever um, the get object method is going to save. And then we're going to print something and we're going to return the content type. So in this scenario, we are going to uh, display what the content type of our file is. So for example, if we upload a text file, we want it to say content type text. If we upload a JPEG file, we want it to say content type JPEG. And this is going to be the error handling part of it. Okay, let's go ahead and create our function. Okay, so congratulations, your Lambda function has been successfully created and configured. Now let's just scroll down and take a look at some of this. Okay, so our code source, this is going to be where our Lambda function or our Lambda code sits. Now, if you want to edit this anytime, you would come here and you would just make your edits over here. So let's do, let's, let's, let's just do this first. You would deploy it and then your changes are saved. You have to click on deploy Otherwise, your code is not going to be deployed and it's you're not going to get your expected results. Let's bring this back over here. Okay, and deploy. Now, let's go back over here and see our test section. Now, Lambda provides you with a couple of test events. You can choose from here and over here they have selected S3 put. And the next one is going to be our monitor section. Now here you can see like metrics of your Lambda function. So let's wait for it to load. Okay, since I just deployed it, we're not going to be able to see like a ton of metrics, but once we um, upload some files and come back to the screen, we're going to see some action over here. So let's come back to this in a second. Let's go to configuration. So. If you see in this left panel here, you are able to really customize some of your um, options over here. So for example, permission. So the execution role, if you want to update your permissions to the role that you attach to your Lambda function, you would come here, you would click here and it would open a new, okay, let's do that. 
it would open a new window and you would be able to alter your um, permissions over here. So similarly, um, if we look at destinations, we, we can add more destinations, environment variables, we can add some tags. Um, we can do like a couple of things over here. Okay, next up is our aliases and versions. So aliases and versions kind of go hand in hand. So if you want to create an alias for your function, you would come here and create your alias. Um, you can also have different versions for the same Lambda function. So it kind of works like a snapshot of your code. Um, so if you have multiple versions, let's say you have two versions, you can create different aliases for those two versions. And you can invoke these two versions depending on the alias that it's named. Okay, let's see if this function really works. So let's go to S3. Let's open in a new window. Okay, cross this. So like I said earlier, I have one bucket over here. So let's go in there and let's try to upload something here. Okay, so I have I have nothing. I have no objects over here. So I'm going to try and upload just a text file. And in this window, you can drop, uh, you can drop like multiple files um, for upload. Okay, yada, 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 and upload. Okay, upload successful. Close this, and let's go to objects. Okay, so we have, so now we have our um, object sitting in our bucket. Now let's come to our Lambda function. and come to monitor so we should see okay so we have invocations we have one invocation here which means that our lambda was in fact triggered um, then we have duration so how long our lambda function ran and we have um, error count and success rate so we have one success so we have 100 percent success so which means that this lambda was triggered and it ran successfully and we have a couple more metrics over here um, if you are interested in that. So let's see where we're able to see our see the output of our uh, Lambda functions. So okay, let's come here. Let's go to CloudWatch. And let's come to cloud log groups. So if you had a couple of Lambda functions, you will see them over here, uh, the log groups representing those functions. Um, but the one that we're interested in is the one that we just created, which is Mahex Lambda function. So let's click over here. And let's click on the log stream and there. So it says content type, text plain. Let's do another quick little thing. Let's upload another file. So let's up, let's upload a PDF. How about that? Okay. Boom. Say upload. Okay. Close. Come back to our CloudWatch. Go back here. Here. And there we have it. Application type. App, uh, sorry, content type. Application PDF. So. And then we have our invocations. We have two now, so one point for here and one point over here. And we have a duration slide, so let's see over here. There we go. And then we have a couple of more points on our error count and success rate. So all of them are all of them were successful. So that is great. Now you can see creating such functions, such small functions, in fact, are very easy to do in Lambda. If you had to do this without using Lambda, you would do something like spinning off a EC2 instance. You would give it proper permissions, proper roles for it to talk to our S3 bucket. Um, you would probably have to download Python libraries and all of that jazz on your EC2 instance. You would write the same thing. You would write a similar code onto your EC2 instance um, and you would trigger that file. That process will take a really long time. It would take a significantly longer time than what we spent doing this on Lambda. Now, if we scale this to bigger functions or bigger applications, you can really see how Lambda is going to save you tons and tons of time.
And there we have it. We have successfully deployed a Lambda function. We have uh, looked at our metrics, so our error count and success rate, our invocations. We've also taken a look at our log groups. So come over here and our log group over here where we can see the, um, the output that our Lambda function is going to generate. If you like this video, please do consider subscribing. I make two videos a week, all on cloud computing and tech and code. I'm also doing the cloud resume challenge, so please subscribe to follow along. And until then, I will see you in my next one.